Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Hear now God's word. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of God for us the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This passage is one that many people call, how many of y'all, this is one of your favorite passages? A few. Uh, a lot of people even have it memorized because it's fairly short. Uh, but I find that when I really think about the words of this passage, it's hard for me. It sounds great. Trust in the Lord. Don't be anxious. Pray and you'll get peace. I mean, perfect. But I found it can be hard to live like these verses want us to. Maybe you do too. But in my opinion, trust is, isn't something you ask for and get. It is something that you earn. Personally, it doesn't matter to me whether you're my next door neighbor or the creator of the universe. I have to get to know you before I can trust you. So today, I want to talk about the courage to trust what it takes to trust people, and even more importantly, what it takes to trust God. Let's start with some basics. The dictionary says that trust is firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Now, we trust all sorts of things all the time. If you drove here today, you trusted that the brakes in your car were going to work uh, or you wouldn't have gotten here safely. Uh, and for things like this, we put time and effort to maintain them so that they warrant our trust. Sometimes I think it can be actually easier to trust things than people because people have their own agendas that are not always aligned with mine. Have you ever heard somebody say to you, just trust me? I hate that phrase. <laughs> it sets off alarm bells in my mind. Because if somebody is having to say, just trust me, I immediately think they are inher inherently untrustworthy. Um, yes, I know that might sound cynical, but I like to think it's fairly pragmatic. Um, but as you can tell, it takes me quite a while to get to know someone well enough to trust them. But when you come to the point of trusting a person, you can rely on them. You know that they care about you, that they have your best interest at heart, that they will be there when you need them, that they will support you when you need it, and that they will tell you the truth, even if it might not be a truth that you really want to hear. It can be hard to find a person that you rely on like this. Uh, and developing this type of relationship takes time and effort because the bar for trusting somebody is very high. And while we do need to trust some things and some people so that we can live, there's another type of trust that we need in order to flourish, to live our best life. And that is trusting God. In this passage, Paul is telling the believers in Philippi to have complete trust in the Lord. 
Now, complete trust means full reliance on with no backup plan. That's what Paul wants for the Philippians and what I want for all of us. Maybe you've achieved complete trust with someone in your life. And maybe you have it with God. But if you don't, it's okay because you're not alone. And so let's talk about what it takes to come to a point where we can really trust God. Well, the way we learn to trust God is similar to the way we learn to trust a person. We need to get to know God. We can do this in lots of ways, but I'm going to mention just three of them this morning. The first is to learn about who God is and God's character, what God's like. And that's by, we do that by reading scripture. We read, and when we read and contemplate scripture, really think about it like we've been doing with this deep dive in Philippians. We can see what God has done in the past and learn about God's character and faithfulness. So reading the Bible helps us get to know God. A second way we get to know God is through prayer. Prayer is just talking to God. When we are willing to pour out our hearts to God and make God a part of our lives, we begin to feel a closeness with, the, with God. But prayer, like any conversation, is a two-way street. We can't do all the talking. While God wants to hear from us and wants us to share everything in our lives and on our hearts, we also need to take time to be still and quiet and listen. Now, as we are quiet and open ourselves to the divine presence, we begin to hear from God. Now, it might be an actual voice, uh, or it might feel like a little prick of your conscience, or maybe an idea that won't leave your head. Uh, it could be through the words of Scripture seemingly jumping off the page at you that day, uh, or it could, God could be speaking to us through the words of the, a song on the radio or the words of a friend. There are lots of ways God communicates with us. But by making ourselves receptive, I firmly believe that we will hear from the Lord when we need to. In this way, we learn about God's faithfulness and patience and that God is always there with us. The third way we get to know God is to hear about other people's experiences of God, people that we know. This can happen in Sunday school or other small groups. It can happen with our family or among friends. All we need is a space where we feel safe enough to share what's on our hearts, not just what's going on in our lives, but maybe our struggles with our faith, or where we've seen God in our lives. In all these ways, we can get to know God. No matter how well we know God, though, up here, we have to put what we know into action at some point and actually trust. Now, this need to trust God might happen because of a death of someone close to us. It might happen with a bad diagnosis, a breakup, or any number of things that rock our world and make us realize that we have no control over the things that really matter. At this point, we need the courage to trust. We need the courage to cling to God and the assurance that God loves us and is with us and will be with us in the midst of our difficulties. Now, we can develop this courage to trust with practice, what I call exercising our trust muscles. We can start by trusting God with small things. Uh, and notice how faithful God is with that, that God is there for us. And for me, 
when I started to trust God, it was doing little things like feeling that prick of conscience and then going and doing what I thought God wanted me to. And I found that when I did that, I was right where I needed to be. So I learned to trust that voice. That's just my way, but there are lots of ways to learn to trust God and how we can practice that trust. And as we use these ways, as we start to trust God, we gain confidence that God will be there with us when our world is falling apart. And while God may not fix our situation, we trust that God will be there with us in it. Now we can begin to understand that no matter what happens to us here on earth, God loves us and that this life isn't all there is, that there's something better waiting for us. And when we can get to that point, we can become like Paul. And whether we live or whether we die, we know that we will be with God and we will be okay. As we trust God that much, we receive that peace that passes all understanding that Paul was writing about. Now, you may think you can never get to this point, a point where you have peace no matter what's going on in your life. But we all can. It comes like I said, from trusting God's love for us and God's presence with us. Now, one of my spiritual mentors was my mother, and she faced a time that put her trust in God to the test. Six months after I got married, Mama was diagnosed with stage 3 aggressive breast cancer. And so she and Daddy went out to MD Anderson to get treatment. And she told me later after they came back, because they were out there just by themselves. She said, Austin, I got to the point where I was out there and I had been talking to the doctors. And I knew that this cancer could kill me. And I was petrified. So one night, I couldn't sleep because I was afraid. And I got down on my knees in tears and poured out my heart to God in prayer. And I said, Lord, I know you and you know me, and I know you love me, and you've been with me throughout my whole life. But I don't want to die. I want to be here for my children and my family. But Lord, I know that you love me, And I'm going to trust you with them and with my life. And she said that when she got to that point where she could put her life in God's hands, she got that peace that carried her through. And it carried her through not just that cancer battle, but lots of other things that came to her over the course of the rest of her life. Now, when she recounted that experience to me, it made an impression on me. I learned that even though my mother, who read the Bible and had quiet time every morning, who had taught Sunday school pretty much all of my life and was leading Bible studies and was a prayer warrior, I mean, she checked all the boxes, but that she was still scared when faced with the prospect of dying. But I also knew that all her life up to that point had given her the foundation that she needed so that when things were their bleakest, she had the courage to trust God. And once she got to that point where no matter what, she knew she would be okay because God was with her, she had peace through lots and other ups and downs in life. It carried forward. My friends, 
I hope that we can all get to that point where we have the courage to trust God. Because trusting God enables uh, us, all of us, to receive that peace and not be anxious. The good news is that God is here and God loves us whether we notice it or not. Whether we trust God or not, God is there with us. It's just that if we don't trust God, we don't access that peace that can help us in those difficult times. Now, thankfully, developing this type of trust does not depend on us. If we open the door to a relationship with God, God is there for us. And God will enable us to trust in the Lord. Now, this developing this trust can be a lifelong process, but God gives us all we need for each step of that journey. When we are able to really trust God, we do get that peace that passes all understanding. And that peace enables us to weather all the storms of life that can blow, knowing that God is holding us in the palm of God's hand. Thanks be to God.